Hi, everyone. Welcome to The Thoughtful Entrepreneur. I'm your host, Jen Amos. And today I have with me Erin Lomanjek, who is the CEO and founder of Transformational Speaker Agency. She is currently writing a book called The Thoughtful Thought, uh, she is currently writing a book called The Spiritual Thoughtful Leader, and she hosts a podcast show called Transformation Speakers. Erin, welcome to the show. Hi, thanks for having me. I'm excited to be here. Yeah, we're really happy to have you. Um, I thought I'd ask, I think this is a good icebreaker question for everyone. As we know, 2020 is a very interesting year. So I thought I would ask you, how are things going? How is the, the new normal going for you? Well, I would say that financially and the business side, it's going really well. I've started three new business, like mm. three new streams of revenue in the, in the time that we've been doing this. Wow. The hardest part I think is now I'm homeschooling mm. and I'm not talking about virtual school. I'm talking about official homeschool. Wow. So trying to balance having a five and a 12 year old getting all of their homework done and all their stuff at the same time running a full business. So yes, that part of the balance is a little cockeyed, but I'm, I'm hoping that as we get through this, we can, we can get a new normal. Oh yeah, absolutely. So before the pandemic started, were you homeschooling or has this been a new thing since it's oh, it's all new? I, and I did like the total help who knows anything about homeschooling <laughs> in my Facebook. Oh my goodness. Yeah. I, um, one of my cousins or two of my cousins actually were uh, homeschooled growing up because they were a military family. And, you know, it's really hard to, um, establish that social group and everything when you're moving around so much. And, uh, I just know that there's this huge community of mothers who really, um, see the value and benefit of homeschooling at the same time. If you are a business owner, it really is a lot to juggle. It really is because, you know, you, we all know nowadays you're going to see the like, kids walking in on Zoom calls <laughs> and like different things, right? We all become, that's like a new normal. It used yeah. to be like, don't come in here. I'd look at the door like, and I'd put my hand up like, no, go out now. But now <laughs> it becomes a new normal where they're coming in and out. And people actually, because this is what I love about what we've, what we've created Mm -hmm. is it actually creates more intimacy. You get to yeah. see me when my kids do walk in. I give them a hug. I give them a kiss. I usually say, say hi. And they get to participate and they walk out. That is the new normal. And I think you get to understand me a little bit more when you see me with my kids. You see that yeah. I'm the same person I'm on stage, the same person I'm with my kids. It's just always me. And so that part gives you that deeper layer of knowing the other people. And I think that that's what the, you know, going online is really done for all of us. Yeah, absolutely. I actually really like how, just like what you said, the, this time, um, this interesting time in history has really created a more intimate um, relationship with people. And I actually really like it and I, I see the benefits in it. And I'm just curious, uh, maybe in your personal opinion, why do you think it took us for the pandemic to start showing or start to, to build that intimate relationship, um, whether it's professionally or, or really just sort of in a way blur the boundaries, but not really, you know what I mean? Like, why did it take us to this point to be okay with that and to finally accept that and see the beauty in it? People are afraid to share their darkest stories. So people mm. hide a lot. We all wear a mask of some sort. I yeah. see it. A lot of times people will get up on stage and be like, yeah, I'm telling a story about my dad's death. And I'm like, why do they still have a face? Because it's their speaker face right. is what I call it, right? Mm. It's this thing that we're trying to per be perceived as. And what happens is you can't do that. You're literally in my home, in my home office. My spare bedroom's on that side of the room. Like you're in my house. And so the intimacy is so much deeper. You're really mm -hmm. literally sitting across my, my desk talking to me in my office, right? And so when we, we think about that, it kind of blurs all those lines and lets those walls down. Yeah. And we've seen a lot of crazy things on Zoom, right? And I've even participated where people came in and porn bombed in the middle of an event that I was running. Um, <clears throat> Whoa. <laughs> so the things that you've been exposed to, kind of crazy, but at the same time, you go, okay, this is the new normal, right? And you just settle into that. But I think it's that we finally are letting down those walls because people are inside our homes. Yeah. 
Yeah, absolutely. And I really like that you say that. And I'm just, I'm wondering, and I'm hoping that when we get to a different level of new normal, where we can start seeing each other in person again, um, it's my hope that through this experience, we'll be a little more compassionate with one another and a little more understanding and give each other a little more grace. Um, and I think that up until this point, um, a lot of us, just like what you say, have like a lot of dark, dark parts of ourselves that we're not comfortable with sharing. But now that we know that we all have that, you know, we all have uh, skeletons in the closet and uh, that's okay <laughs> you know that's okay yep. we could talk about it we could be human with one another and uh, i'm really uh, very curious to see like as the oppor as new opportunities are coming out i'm curious to see what more opportunities will come out when we do get to a different level of a new normal yeah, I think it's, this is, you know, humans don't change unless they're under a lot of pressure or forced to a lot of times. Mm -hmm. I would tell you, I've wanted to homeschool because I can travel the world, bring my kids with me. Next week I'm speaking in Arizona. I was like, hmm, do I run an RV and take my whole family? <laughs> like thinking about these fun things, right? Yeah. And so I think that that's what's, that's going to really change everything. I would have never homeschooled and here I am homeschooling because I was forced to in a way. Mm -hmm. But now I'm like, you know, I don't know if I want to send them back because the things that they're learning, my son's writing his own book, Language Arts. Awesome. Um, he has, uh, he's an entrepreneur. That's also classwork, right? We can come in economics and business. So the things that we, I already teach my kids that are maybe outside of the teaching realm now become a part of the curriculum. And mm -hmm. I think that really has made me think, you know what? Sorry, but screw school in a way because Yes, my kids are getting the math and the, the science and the things that they have to have for each class level. But at the same time, there's so much more you can teach your kids that will actually help them in the future, right? Yeah. Like Absolutely. we're studying YouTube right now. Like, <laughs> yes, figure it out. C crack the code and help mommy. Yeah, for sure. You know, I, as someone who grew up in the public, um, public school system, I appreciate it for what it is. At the same time, I do see a difference in my peers who were homeschooled. I feel like they um, just have this natural confidence about them. And I think it's because they didn't have to they, they had more support when it came to the pressures of growing up and aging, where I feel like, at least I think for myself, I had to fend for myself, you know, when I was bullied or, um, you know, just, just really felt neglected in school. And, you know, the school system is a school system for a certain reason, but there is like, if you do have the opportunity to uh, provide that extra care and attention to your kids, it's like, why not? Um, and I, it's just really beautiful to hear what your experience has been so far and, and how you've, you, you're essentially okay with it now. At first you're like, oh my gosh, there's a lot. But you're like, you know what? This actually works out. And my kids, they're engaging with me. They're having conversations with me. They're building with me. They're creating with me. And what's more beautiful than that? Right. And you can, you know, I love it. Like we had him watch The Social Dilemma. If you haven't watched oh. it on Netflix, watch yeah. it. And <laughs> watch then I had it. him, right? Right. Yeah. I had him get up and do a speech about it what he thought about it and how he wow. felt, you know, what his ideas were about what was happening and all of that. And that who teaches public, you don't teach public speaking until you're in high school and college. Mm -hmm. But my son has seen me speak on stages since he was two. Mm. He got on a stage. I think there was 500 people in the room. He's like, mommy, can I come up there? And I looked around. I was like, do you guys mind? Like, no, he came up and he had the microphone for five minutes and he did his little thing. And it was so cute mm -hmm. because that's something that is something that they can transfer into you know, in the long-term road. Right. And so yeah. why not teach some of these things that kids might not get until they're in high school? Yeah, absolutely. And sometimes it, it's even harder when they realize those are some skills that they should learn, you know, public speaking, you know, showing empathy, connecting with people. Uh, I mean, as you get older, that I think is, has, starts to become like the most important thing. And, you know, a lot of us, such as myself, have to go through a lot of therapy, you know, to get to that place to finally feel like, okay, I can look at you, I can be present with you, and I can just have an open dialogue with you. And some people struggle with that. And I think, you know, with the public school system in certain ways, not all the time, I'm not trying to like bash on the, the school system, just in my personal experience, I feel like you were sort of uh, conditioned to, to be a certain way and act a certain way so that when it's time to break through that, it's the hardest thing ever. It's like going back at square one or going back to kindergarten in a, in a different way. Way. And so, Erin, I just want to applaud you for what you're doing with your kids. And I think it's a great example and, and hopefully a source of inspiration for other parents who uh, may want to consider teaching their kids at home. Yeah.
I mean, I'm, I bought tickets to go to Unleash the Power Within. It's mm. going to be playing on my big screen TV in my entire house. And I'm inviting my sister's kids over. I'm like, you want to do some of the work that I've done because I've done deep work in this area. Mm -hmm. So for me, I want my kids to be able to do that now, learning their limitations, figuring out if there is limiting beliefs they have and annihilating them now instead of mm. later. Yeah. So all of that, we always say hashtag homeschool curriculum. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Well, Erin, let's go ahead and, and talk a little bit about your life today. Um, I have here in my notes that I know, I know in the pandemic, you created three different sources of income, but in my notes here, you've actually a total have over 18 different streams of income. So tell me a little bit about that. How did you do that? <laughs> I, if I can get paid for every single thing I do, I will. <laughs> like it's, and the reason isn't about money. Like, I think that's where people get hung up. The mm. thing is I can't sustain the message if mm. I don't have the funds to do so. Mm. Right. And I, my, my favorite quote that I, that I say is you can't be a lighthouse to the world if you can't keep your own lights on. And so we think wow. about how we're serving and getting out there and doing all these things. But if you're doing that, you're totally giving, but you're not receiving. Yeah. So there has to be that equal p pull and push on both sides for you to really do that. And so, I mean, everything that I do, I created a magazine while in the pandemic. I created, <laughs> you know, I have an event company and a book publishing part of my company now. Love so it. now I have all the different pieces that I need a, in my business, but all the people that I serve who have a message they want to create a movement with, they all need these people too. Mm -hmm. So I'm just teaching from what I do. And that's really, truly always been the way I've led. I won't say, hey, you should try doing a telesummit. I've never done a telesummit. So you can see, I'm like, it's one thing I haven't done. <laughs> <clears throat> and now I think that's a little outdated, but I wouldn't tell you, I think you should do one if I haven't done it and mm -hmm. known exactly the things that work, done deep research into it. Like, that's my thing. I really want to make sure it's something I'm handing off to you that, you know, has a like foolproof method. Like, here's what, what, how, what I did and how I did it. Go and do it for yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, the first thing uh, that really uh, striked me in what you were saying is just the importance of like, you know, you can't be a beacon of light for people if you can't keep your own lights on. And I think that for a lot of starting entrepreneurs or even struggling entrepreneurs, that's the one thing that they struggle with. I've definitely struggled with that. You know, I, for whatever reason, I have convinced myself that I have to do this charity work and I have to like give and give and give. And maybe one day, you know, I'll get something in return. But I realize part of doing that is asking for the sale, is asking, you know, to receive that. And so, uh, I'm curious if you have some maybe words of wisdom for people that um, need to need to understand that, yeah, they do need to pay the bills to have the lights on so that they can be that beacon of light for people. Well, I have two things. So I always think about like, all right, so let's, let's take two people. Mm -hmm. One is the business owner and their day today is, you know, I'm going to go to Barnes and Noble. I'm going to get another book. I want to, I want to read, I want to do something about YouTube. I, I want to find everything about YouTube. Right. Mm -hmm. So we have the other person who wakes up and it's like, man, I really wish I knew what I wanted to do when I, when I grow up, I really wish that there was just someone that just knew the route <laughs> to the top of the mountain who could just help me. I'm praying and manifesting. Please bring me the person. That person goes, well, you know, I'm going to go to the bookstore and see if I can find a book. All of a sudden, two people are standing there next to each other in the self-help section of the mm. bookstore. And they're literally start up a conversation. And if that person goes, I'm really looking to find my purpose and my mission. And this coach, this person who teaches people that just goes, oh, that's really great. Here's some books you should try. You just gave the finger to whatever higher power you believe in mm. because they just, it just was set up just for you in that moment, but wow. you were so scared and so worried about sounding pushy or salesy or whatever the thought that you have is mm -hmm. that you didn't say, you know, that's what I do for a living. Would you like to know more? Mm. Like it's, it's like if you had the cure to cancer and yeah. somebody with cancer came up to you, are you going to say, sorry, um, I can't really share this. I'm, I don't want to feel salesy. <laughs> like, hello people. Like, <laughs> When you break it down like that, it. this is like the way to get around your subconscious. The way to get around all those limiting beliefs is really go at, really? I would just not give it to them? Mm -hmm. No, that's not who I am. Because if you're in this business, if you're in the service-based business, your servitude, your servant's heart isn't being served if you don't sell. Right, right. Mm. Service equals sales. Sales equals service. 
Oh, I love that. I love that. I have to like write that down for myself. Service equals sales and sales equals service. <laughs> that is a profound advice, Erin. And I appreciate you saying that. And the pep talk too. I feel like it's a, it's a good tough love talk that you just shared with us just now. <laughs> I'm straight to the point. I don't sugarcoat <laughs> much, uh, but it always comes from a place of just loving you as, a, as what you're here to do on this planet. And I take a stand for the people you're here to serve. Mm. So sometimes you know, it might be that sale, feel salesy and you're like, oh, I don't know. But it's also when I offer it to you that needs it, you're going to go out and serve the world in a bigger way. And mm -hmm. so if I don't serve you, they don't get served. So right. I'm standing for all those people that you've committed, that you've mm -hmm. been brought here for, that that is what you're here to do. And if you're not doing it, I'm going to stand in your face and say, hello, <laughs> what are you doing? Like, look at the people you're here to serve. Don't look, think about you. Get out of your own way. I love it. I love it. Well, Erin, I want to touch a little bit on your company, Transformational, Transfer, Transformational Speaker Agency. And I could just already tell that you study and practice and teach what you preach. And so tell me a little bit about, you know, what have been the ideal clients or the clientele that you have been working with with your company? Yeah. So, you know, we never like get a straight shot to what we're here to do in this world, right? <laughs> right. I wanted to be a dolphin trainer as a child, did that went and figured out that all they wanted was a psych degree or a teaching degree. And I was like, well, I love people. Let's do psychology. So I got mm -hmm. my undergrad in psychology, decided I wanted to be a therapist. And I had a husband who was in the military, so traveling around. But what I realized is when I sat down across from somebody and they just complained and didn't want change and they mm -hmm. kept coming back, kept coming back. I was like, I, I can't do this. I really, the, you've already heard a little tough love. I want you to move. I mm -hmm. want you to get point A to point B. So I'm very results driven. So a lot of my clients come to me if they're already speaking and they're out on stages and I was like, oh my gosh, that was so great, but no one's buying from you. Mm -hmm. And so everything I do in my business, I teach you based on psychology. When you speak, there's four parts of compelling communication. One's nonverbal communication. So everything that you're seeing here on camera, but also on stage, if you, if you show up confident and like the person that you say you are, right? If you're the expert in the first few minutes, if you're not, I'm going to pull out my phone and start scrolling, right? So <laughs> If we see that, then it's the vocal tonality. Most people don't talk about vocal tonality. Mm. That's the going up and going down, getting louder, getting quieter. That's the pacing that you use, all of those things. If you do that interchangeably throughout your talk, you become memorable. And the reason that is, is because it unlocks the episodic part of our memory. Mm -hmm. So you might be able to, to sing all the lyrics to all the songs that you knew as a kid, but couldn't remember what you ate for breakfast. It's because <laughs> it's stored in a different place in your brain. Mm. And so to become memorable, you got to learn to vocal tonality. And the third piece is storytelling. Storytelling is so deep in the part where you're deeply connecting with the other people. You're getting, when you tell your story, you're actually releasing your own oxytocin. So it's the feel good chemical. Then when you tell your story in the way that I teach it, you unlock everybody's story in the audience. I don't care what age, gender, creed, religion, anything you can connect on, on being a human. And so we really take those things that we've all experienced and put it into your story. That way they're in their story and they release their own oxytocin. And that's that bondy, bonding chemical for mommies and babies. <laughs> all of a sudden they're eating, they're like, what do you have? I want whatever you're, you're, you're offering me because you know, you understand me and you know the route to the top of the mountain, wow. right? Yeah. So that's really important. And so I have different clientele. I have a full um, corporate side. I work mm -hmm. for Microsoft, Boeing, Amazon, Google, Expedia, like all the big tech companies in Seattle. But I work with a lot of entrepreneurs mm -hmm. and mostly women. I would say I work mostly with women because there's a lot of other, like a lot of other coaches out there that are great for men. But I really want to help women rise to leadership. I yeah. want women to use their voices, be seen, be heard, taken seriously and moving them to the top because there is a gender disparity, right? So let's, let's, let's abolish that. And we need both sides. We need both sides. The men that look at the bottom line and the people in the room and how the decisions affect them and the women in the room that think about that, but then think about the company and then think about the community and the world mm -hmm. and how the decisions affect that. We need both parties at the table to, to make big decisions in business.
Yeah, absolutely. That just reminds me of, uh, I watched, I am like late on this, but I watched Black Panther recently Mm -hmm. and you know, in, in the movie, it shows how the women and men are truly equals and the women are strong, not because they're angry or not because they have something to prove, but they just are. And, uh, you know, unfortunately that is not always the case, uh, in real life and reality. And so it's just great to have people like you, Aaron, who are uh, serving these women and letting them know that, you know, they are worthy they are necessary and it's their responsibility to step it up and speak up and speak out and be of service to the community um it is unfortunate that we have to like work through that but it's great when you do have the tools i think to do that kind of like how you provide that extra care to your kids by homeschooling them like sometimes we just need that extra support and that's completely okay yeah the great part is when i do this work so somebody might hire me for speaking Mm -hmm. but let me just tell you that is not all we do because there's a lot of the limiting beliefs and the self-sabotage things that come up and so i always say if you're a coach don't have a program shorter than three months or at even three months it should be no longer no shorter than six months actually because about the three and fourth month we have our major breakdown so Mm -hmm. if i was coaching you jen and you can facade for a while. And then if things aren't working, you're going to go sideways and have a breakdown. (laughs) And then we can go back and say, okay, what was it that derailed you? Because Mm -hmm. it's probably derailed you before. So -hmm. let's examine it so you don't do this again. Right. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. that is the most important thing. There should be that breakdown in there. I've done inner child work. So I've done deep stuff with, with my therapy background that I bring into helping people get their voice out. Because there's so much, like you said, school kind of tells you to numb it down, be quiet, st- you know, stand in line, put your hands to yourself, don't make a noise, don't stand out, like right. all of that, right? And so we've all taught to be so much quieter and other cultures teach you that even more. You're here to be seen and not heard. Don't speak up, only let the elder speak. All these different things that mm-hmm. we're being shackled by that I have to help unleash so that you really can share the message that you're here to share with the world. Oh, preach. I love it. <laughs> Aaron, thank you so much for your time. I, I feel like we only scratched the surface to just everything that is going on with you and how and, and the many ways that you can serve people. Before we go, why don't you just share some parting advice to our small business owners and entrepreneurs that are aspiring to, I don't know, maybe build 18 different streams of income or just, you know, be successful overall. What do you want to share with them? So two things. So my thing is you have to learn how to you really convert from stage. So I definitely have a freebie I can give away um, that teaches you how to build more of that know, like, and trust so that when you are on stage, you've already built a lot of that. So when it comes to the sale or the offer, they're already waiting for you, Mm. right? And so that's really important. People think, oh, you speak, so you just show up and speak and then that's it. I was like, no, there's a front load that I do and a back load that I do that really helps you close 10K from any stage. So if you want that that's, a, that's actually the website, 10 kfromanysagecom There you go. So you can get that. The thing that I think is the most important, since we all get into these thoughts about who we are and what we should do and how we should do it, the one thing that I do that I think is different is I use my future self. So hmm. my future self is ELJ. She's a $40 million company. She sat, sat under the trees with Oprah. She's a New York Times bestselling author. She's already done it all, right? Hmm. So when I'm stuck in my business, I pull her in and ask for her advice. You see, she's not stuck going, oh, well, right now you have to think about your kids and the homeschool and the this and the that and the money and then, right? She's not there because she's already seen how you get through it, right? And so there's a different, she's not stuck in the problem. Mm -hmm. The reason people are good at coaching is because when you're stuck in your problem, you can't see out. Somebody Mm -hmm. else can help guide you out, but you can also use your future self. The Mm -hmm. other thing I use my future self for is borrowing her confidence. Mm. She's a $40 million company owner, walks around a little differently than someone with a million dollar company, right? And so when I'm going for a big ask, if I'm asking to be on someone's stage that's like, whoo, scary for even me, I use her, I'm like, I just embody her and I Mm. use her confidence to go and ask for those things. So whether you're struggling with imposter syndrome or just stuck, just feeling so stuck and you can't see out, call in your future self, figure out who that person is for you and use that as your avatar to like, okay, what do I need to do today to get me to where you are? Mm, Powerful. 
I like how, um, for me, I feel like I was always uh, coached on how to connect with my inner child, but um, this is the first time I'm hearing to connect with your future self. So Aaron, thank you so much for that. Um, I know that a lot of people are going to walk away with inspiration from our conversation today. Um, with that said, thank you so much for your time. It was an absolute pleasure having you today. Yes. Thank you. It was fun. Yeah. And to our listeners, again, this is Erin Loman jeck She is a CEO and founder of Transformational Speaker Agency. She is writing a book right now called The Spiritual Thought Leader, and she, she is the host of Transformation Speakers. If you want to learn more about her, check out her website at erinlomanjack.com. With that said, thank you all so much for joining us and tune in next time.